Fox here, and today we are continuing our playthrough of the Princes of the Apocalypse. In the last session, uh, the party had finally <laughs> finished exploring the um, what? Well, I can't remember. Sacred Stone Monastery, and, and after going through the monastery, they freed the slaves, and they managed to make it back to Red Larch with some of the survivors. Um, since then, they the party has rested up, and they were just starting to, you know, recover, and, and that's kind of where we're just going to pick up today. So they finished the Sacred Stone Monastery, and now it's time to pursue our next lead. Does anybody remember what the next lead was, or? Was, was the man in the the, the, the the like the blood court or whatever I take that as a no I remember you should tell us though so the stream <laughs> 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 well uh Finn Finn yeah uh what are you talking about the man like are you talking about the that that uh, old man who was in the temple and came back to the city and we well, were talking with him so but the demon appeared or something like that uh, I, I remember that that's you know what you're 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 close but it's it goes your bar or counselor or whatever not not quite a hundred percent because I was trying to get you guys to talk to him and you never did. <laughs> well, we did for a little bit, then the demon came around. Yeah, well, yeah, that's then why... Then we were speaking and something else was said, and then... There you go, look, skeleton hole. <laughs> um, hold on, I have to find... Because I actually don't have those notes open. Because that was on last week. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Uh, come on. All right, wait. I don't see where it's talking about all the slaves, but wasn't his name like Belen, Belen Teluk? Uh, North. No. Broldenthar. I can't find his character sheet with his information and all the stuff that he knew and told you guys. All right. Well, doesn't matter because I remember the the only piece of information that you were supposed to retain from that conversation with Broldenthar was that uh, the Mirabor delegation you guys have been looking for had been ambushed and captured by cultists. Some of them were uh, set to work the slave mines in the Sacred Soul Monastery. Others were taken to uh, by Eternal Flame cultists, and he had mentioned hearing the name. Scarlet Moon Hall. That that was what you were. Uh, that that was you know basically all he was able to tell you. So we don't know where this hall is, right? Nope. Um, let's find out. <laughs> it's you a whole day in the bar just asking people. Yes. Oh, well, he told exactly. us approximately why. He gave us a direction, which I can't remember. I think he did. Maybe, I, maybe those. I think maybe. Maybe those. I think he, it was sort of like a rough, like head west, you know. Yeah, like like two days west or something. No, I don't even. I, I know he didn't tell you like a. Uh, like like a a direct like it was just directional. It wasn't uh, distance or because he didn't know the exact location. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, anyway. 
So, you guys, uh, we had said, you're sitting in the swinging sword. You're kind of conversing, trying to determine, you know, when you're going to head out, what you're doing. And eventually, you see people uh, walking in, okay? And they are a very peculiar looking set of people. Um, first of all, there is an elven woman and she enters into the tavern first. She's got, you know, silver hair and purple eyes and it's already quite striking, but it's her companion that, that seems to draw the most attention is almost all the eyes in, in the inn turn because she's being accompanied by a, a walking plant creature. It, it's a, a literal elemental that, that is just kind of sauntered into the inn. And, and he's hunched over because uh, at his full height, yes, I mean, he's almost six and a half feet tall. I mean, he's massive. Here we go again, boys. Well, that's peculiar. Do, 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 do you guys have seen this plant thing somewhere? It's, it's been a weird day in town. I assume it's here to kill us. So let's just... Just get on with it. <laughs> okay. Slowly takes out his, his dagger. Yeah. Alright, clear the bar. You know the drill. Yeah, this is like a saloon entrance. Like, everyone, all right, grab your guns. <laughs> I turn to my plant companion and say, I, I, think, I think we could get water for you here. We could, we could get water, definitely water here for you. Uh, those, those gentlemen over there, they, they, look, they look like they can, they can help us, although they have weapons of some sort. But yes, we, we will see water, maybe. Okay, as I see... Finn and his companions, I'm going to walk up to them. And I'm going to say that finally I have met, uh, found you. Who walked up? You <laughs> find who? You guys. I'm to uh, talking about you. Uh, what? <laughs> Yeah, they're definitely here to kill us. Yeah, this sounds they know our right. faces. <laughs> hey, Lisa, evacuate the bar. <laughs> <laughs> She's just kind of standing there looking. I'm not really sure what's about to happen. So, so, um, who are you guys? Uh, uh, girl and plant, I believe. Why we, we're the, we're the, yeah, I mean, I'm Emma, and I'm Nate, and I'm here with my, my plant friend, we're, we're, we're just, you know, we're trying to, you know, get him some water, obviously. Oh, yeah, you guys, nice. you guys need water. Thanks, but why wouldn't he need water? That doesn't make any sense. There's a lot of things that don't make sense about this current situation. That thing can talk. You heard it talk? I think so, just a second ago. I mean, what, what's the problem? You should... Obviously, he doesn't talk. I mean, there's a mouse on the ground, obviously. But what's up with that? The little tiny thing that flows weird. What did I drink? I mean, I don't know if the bar's serving brandy now, if that's any difference. <laughs> just a water for me. I, I assume maybe maybe I assume too much. Sometimes I assume too much. Maybe the plant doesn't want water. I don't know. But yeah. So if you know about us, which is already a bad sign, uh, you know that we'll probably end this in bloodshed if this goes poorly. What do you want? <clears throat> I'm here to join you in your mission against these cultists and whatever they are planning to do. 
Uh huh. Who are you exactly? Oh, I am Tapio. I have seen you in my visions. Oh, in your visions. Yes, my visions. I have seen things that you have done. Oh boy. I'm gonna get out my brandy and start drinking. You look like you don't believe me. Oh, I believe you. It's just... there's... Uh, it, there's always complications that come with visions. Okay, so... I don't believe you, because... I swear I got hit really hard, because there's this plant that's talking to me and telling me he saw us in our his visions. Well, I have seen things you have done, so maybe I can tell about them. I saw that... Uh, wait a minute. The thiefling you were with, I saw how he died. You mean Yama? If that's his name, then yes. Well, so do you know about Tide? The fishman? I didn't see his fate. I only saw the thiefling and the other one. Hmm. Tide gonna die. <laughs> You're early. What are you doing here? Okay. Um. You guys continue. I didn't mean to interrupt. That's my bad. What? 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 Oh, my immersion. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> it's, it's Disco's fault. Blame him. Who did we meet at the monastery? The Sacred Stone Monastery, then? So, let's... Uh, let's see if I got this right. <clears throat> you guys are here to join us and help us fight the cultists. Is that right? Yes, it is. I just like to travel. But I can use that water if I could get it. That would be great. I really want to. Um, okay. Uh, Kalisa, uh, you can bring water for the... the... Emma, What's her name Emma. again? Emma. I'm Emma. Emma Nate. Hey. <laughs> oh, I get it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Kalissa just kind of still staring widely at the, at the giant plant elemental. Um, but she just fetches a cup and she kind of scoops out some water and, you know, extends her arm her, the entire length, trying to uh, keep her distance. She hands it to Emma. Emma takes it and observes the glass almost curiously as if she's never seen it before. Or she starts drinking. Okay. I, I thought the plant wanted water. Yeah. It said we both wanted water, but no. I didn't want to assume my friend, but he's a plant, so I would assume he would want water too. Maybe he could get a cup. I don't know. So, do you two know each other? Why, why are you here? We came in together. You're walking into town. That's why we know each other. Right. You're a very peculiar group, especially the mouth. That's weird. So, says the person traveling with a walking plant. Well, yeah. They're very common where I'm from. Are they not common here? Um, what is what is this person's race? Who? Uh, you said Emma. An elf. I mean, she's not wrong, they're less common from where I was from, but... Uh, 
uh, no, most things that look like that around here try to kill us, so you can understand our suspicion. I guess. I mean, you know, if you provoke it, obviously it's going to want to defend itself, but I mean, I don't know your guys' circumstances. It's weird. Thanks are pretty easy going. Do you have any clues to find these cultists? Actually, I was just about to ask you if you've if you've seen the future or if you've seen visions. You probably know where the rest of them are. Well, I don't know the locations. I have only seen the buildings. I don't know where they actually are. Right. Do you guys have <clears throat> any idea where this Scarlet, Scarlet Moonhaw is? Who are you asking? Um, everyone? The two new guys? I have no idea. Well... I'm sure they're somewhere nearby, I mean... Wouldn't it be? I mean... I don't know, you guys are the experts. I'm new around here. I don't really know what's going on. And I'm not a guy. I'm a girl, obviously. So, hey, you know, maybe don't call me a guy. Because we're not guys. I need to play. So you really don't want to tell Oh, no. Uh, I'm sorry. Just, uh, just uh, out of habit. So, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I guess they do stuff differently around here. Oh, well. I'm new. I don't really know what's going on. So you guys are, are having this conversation. You're trying to get a get an understanding of the newer people, right? Yes. And, and as you do, um, you see an, an elderly gnome walks into the tavern, right? And he walks up, you know, to your group, and he kind of looks around, and then he he pokes at, at Folkfire with his cane. Um, what is this? Um, <clears throat> yeah, hello, good sir. I, I'm Wigan Nettleby, and uh, I would like to hire your group for uh, an excursion. Uh, excursion? Yeah, yes. Um, you see... I, I live on a farm which is uh, not very far from here and there there is a uh, fire witch she's been burning my crops and uh, threatening my family's safety and uh, I'd like her removed please fire witch hmm. I believe we can accept that request no um, Oh, most excellent. That's very wonderful. Um, it, it, if you would like, um, what are the terms of the agreement? Um, I don't know. He he uh, takes out his cane and he bops you on on the head. Come on now, let's not waste time. B what will it require? I mean, how much are you gonna pay us? That's that's what I am asking. What what would you? Uh, and it's just one fire witch you want taken care of? Mm, uh, I don't know. Uh, me and my family were not the uh, you know fighting type, so we didn't think to go investigate the barrow. Oh, so it's a hole. Den. I don't know. Three thousand gold. He he doesn't even hesitate. Oh, yeah. Oh, all right then. Damn, <laughs> well, that worked. 
Easy? <laughs> I thought I was being ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just go with it. <laughs> Did he just say anything that was cool? That is what he said. <laughs> you should add per person. <laughs> okay, 3,000 gold and some provisions to buy um, supplies. We need to travel with some healing implements and uh, some uh, travel goods. Uh, well, that last bit may be a bit of a problem. Uh, I don't tend to travel with that much coin on my personage. It uh, makes you a target for banditry and the like. Um, sorry. Well, do you have some you can pay up front? I... I think I keep some pocket change in my... Uh, he starts kind of rooting around. He pulls out a pouch. It's got 200 gold in it. Yeah, we'll take that. <laughs> and by we, I mean I'm just going to grab it. Okay. Well, uh, excellent. I'm going to travel back home. Um... I'll be waiting for you at my farm. It's directly southeast of uh, Red Lurch, and you should find it no problem. How, uh, how far travel? About a day. Day and a half. And do we need to connect with you there and then get directions to the barrel? D yeah, I will show you the, the barrel. He's, he's kind of like nodding off. He's very old. I don't know if I made that very clear yet. <laughs> and he just took all his gold. Oh, that's probably why he agreed to us to give so much. Because he's going to die? <laughs> <laughs> there's kind of, there's, ah, I should have asked for more. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I, Back I, at Disney, I, gold was everywhere. I, I'm just kind of thinking about this, like, fire witch and then plant creature. <laughs> Nah, he'll be fine. Is the is that a no? I mean, I, I I don't. Those are so rare. One from I. Wow, I can't believe we ran into one. That's so cool. You Where are you from? Far, far, far away, far away, way, way far away. No one's. Wow, that's amazing. And that's wow. I'll show people. It was quite, quite a journey over here. Quite, quite a journey. Oh my god. Oh my god. Quite a journey. Can you like, kind of ignore her and like walk over the tree, look at it. Do you bleed? Of course I bleed. Wrong voice. And what color is your blood? I assume it's saffron. <laughs> Maple syrup? You could say <laughs> it's like sap, but mixed with blood. And what color is it? I don't know. Do you want to find out? I can't say I'm not curious. I'll take my skimmy thigh and make a little cut in my hand. Okay. Let's say that the uh, resulting blood is blood colored but it's much thicker it doesn't just kind of drip like like a normal beings would it's real thick and uh, has like the sticky consistency of sap does it look does, does it remind me of that other tree actually it does curious I'm gonna take it I'm gonna like dab it with my finger very, very sticky. Taste. I'm gonna taste it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's quite rude. He's drinking his blood. That's. Yeah. I can't believe you would try something like that. That's. Uh, would you be okay if someone tried your blood? I mean, really, in front of your face? That's, that's really. Oh, well, you're welcome to try, but uh, you find an on awful <laughs> lot about his you, blood. Uh... And tastes like 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 greens, like like leafy. Like like plant life, if you, if you understand what I mean. It, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like raw kale. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Co like collard greens and like it's. 
Sure. You can come with us if you're useful. I think uh, I have plans. But uh, first, uh, before we head out, I'm going to go to Galkers. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how this is going to go. You all might want to stay here. Didn't, didn't we kill Gaioka? Yes, unfortunately. Well, he's he's alive, but... It, I imagine he's not going to be happy to see me. Okay. Did you forget where he is? <laughs> Did anybody else want to follow? What store is it? Uh... It's kind of a uh, fencing store. Okay. So, uh, Pikmin and Roven head off to Galkers. And as uh, you walk in, immediately Galkers stands up. And, uh, you know, he... He kind of reaches for a rapier on his belt, and, and the eight other people all pull out their weapons as well. I, and I, I he know. He points I know. at you. He says, "You have a lot of nerve." I have a ton of nerve. That's. I'm. I'm coming here with good tidings, though. Oh. I'm pretty sure that's what your last friend had said. Well, you'll be happy to know that he has since departed this world. No, that doesn't make me happy at all. I had plans. Well, he was finished off by a cultist, so... That doesn't apply to me. No, but I'm just saying the, the work is done. I'm sorry that you didn't get to do it yourself. But... You have, I know you have 30 seconds to explain yourself, or get out. I came to buy potions from you and to offer a peace tiding. <laughs> Rovin, Rovin immediately like raises his hand and is like, I don't know this guy. <laughs> I don't know this guy. <laughs> so, so he's like, one thing first, peace tiding. I assume you're a man who appreciates a good drink, yes? No, no, no. Just set it on the floor in front of you. Uh, I'm going to mage hand him a full bottle of brandy. Okay, so he looks at it, and he looks at you, and he's like, alcohol. This stuff is pretty hard to come by around here, at least in my experience. I happened upon some, I figured this might be a nice gesture. He, he looks at you incredulously. He's like, I run, I run the flippin' black market. I can get whatever I want from wherever I want. What do I need this for? And he takes it, and he smashes it in the nearby wall. Oh, no, you shouldn't have done that. That was not very nice. He's like, get out of here! Listen. I can leave. But I can come <laughs> back one way or another, and you'll never know it was me. So you might as well just deal with me and be peaceable about it. Or you could be suspicious about every single person you ever see walk through the store, because you'll never know if it's me. Or Plan C. I'll hire assassins to torment you and your group every moment of every day until you die or I run out of coin, which is not likely to happen. Or you can turn tail, leave my shop, and then we go about ignoring each other's existence like we did before. Um, uh, stare at him. Take the death stare. I'll leave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> he turns and looks at Rovin. What do you want? Uh, do, you, do you have any armor? Depends. You with that other guy? No idea. I just came to the store. <laughs> uh huh. How'd you hear about us? Uh, some chitter chatter in the tavern. Hmm. Uh. He, he eyes you narrowly. Depends. Show me your coin. 
Depends. What armor you got? He 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 shakes his head and he's like looking around to to all of his thugs and cronies. Like, do you believe this guy? Comes into my shop, starts making demands. He's he turns his attention back to you. He's like, listen, all right. This isn't a conventional store where you get to browse the wares and and spend your time debating if it it's a good fit or if it'll make your butt look big or anything else. You, you, you come in here, you state what you need, and if I can accommodate you, we make a transaction. If not, you leave. So what are you looking for? I need some studded leather. See? That's not difficult. Yes, it, as it were, we have studded leather right over here. And he snaps his fingers, and one of his cronies goes back and pulls out a a complete set of studded leather that it looks uh, remarkably dirty, and it's got blood stains on it. Good enough. <laughs> How much? How much? He says. Uh, let me see here. He he starts counting on his fingers and uh. You know what? It helps if I'm in the right category. He starts counting on his fingers. He's like uh, two, three. Uh, and then eventually he looks up and he goes, "Yeah, yeah. I think, I think sixty gold pieces will cover." Gold. All right. He takes your coins. He hands you the uh, the gear, and he sticks out his hand to shake it. Oh, it's a good day, and I'll take my armor and leave. <laughs> and as as he, as Robin shakes his hand, Falkar pokes his head through the door. Robin, are you done yet? <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, I'm done. I'm just gonna hurry up and leave. Okay. I'm gonna head to the All Shrine. Okay. Now, when you head to the All Shrine, remember that uh, the other priest. This this happened so long ago. The priest that you guys were used to dealing with has left. Remember. And and Funny now it's it's the male priest Imdar, uh, you know, cleric of Tempus, who who is currently there. And as you walk to the all shrine, and and look inside, it it looks like he's preparing the shrine for some sort of ceremony. What's he doing? Well, he's he's burning. Uh, way too many cones of incense and he's got candles everywhere and and he looks to be arranging sticks for a very large bonfire in front of the shrine and he's just out in the open yeah Imdar mm -hmm. sorry if I'm interrupting you what, what's all this he uh kind of looks around at everything and he looks back to you he's like it's a ceremony I, I am oh. here to give praise to Tempest. Strange. All right. Uh, can I bother you for a moment? Depends. Do you sell potions of healing? Why didn't you go to the sundry? Uh, I don't know. I like to give my business here. I feel like we come here for healing, so, you know. Well, if you need healing... I mean, and he starts kind of like rubbing his hands together. He's like, I can perform a quick ritual for a nominal fee and I'll fix you right up. No, no, I'm, I'm looking for the portable kind. That's all right. I'll go to the sundry. Have fun with your whatever you're doing here. Strange. Hmm. As, as you turn and walk away, you see he takes out a flint and tinder and starts trying to light the bonfire. You, you need some help with that? Oh, no, I'll get it. 
And after, after a moment, he does. He does. And the, the flames roar up over so six, seven feet tall. And then uh, he just kind of, you know, he just kind of kneels down at the edge of the fire. And he, and he just, you know, prostrates himself on the ground in like a, a symbol of worship in the direction of the bonfire. Is this, do I know anything about like if this is normal for clerics of Tempest? Um, not, not for Tempest specifically, but there are, you you know that it's a uh, very common practice for very many religions to have, you know, fire rituals and ceremonies, but it almost seems too convenient, doesn't it? It really does. (laughs) (laughs) Then at this point, are you alone? I, I don't know if, I mean, I assume that Rovin and Folkvar are somewhere in my proximity. Yeah. Can I insight check him to see what he's really up to? I mean, you can, but he's not paying attention to you anymore. He's just kind of laying there on the ground. <laughs> yeah, uh, staring at him, kneeling in prayer. Uh, doesn't doesn't really reveal anything to you. I mean, crazy folk fast staring at it. Can he just religion check it? Just sure, because you know he's a priest himself. So sure. Oh, just, that's that's just pretty just good. Gets any incense as to whether it is something that they would do normally. So you know that Tempest, it, it, you know he's. Primarily, he's a god of war. Um, and, and when you think about your your knowledge of Tempest, um, you realize that you know it, the holy symbol of Tempest is a shield of flame emblazoned with a sword wreathed in fire. So it doesn't seem entirely out of the ordinary. Right, and I'll tell um, Pikmin that it's pretty normal for a Tempest to do this since he's uh, his symbols are, and I'll explain what you just told me to to Pikmin. Sure, it's just there's been a lot of fire lately. It's Hellfire, Fire Witch, burning, trying to fire with this guy. I don't really trust anyway. Yeah, whatever. Kitchen at the inn. Yeah. Kitchen at the inn is always burning down. <laughs> <laughs> um, for expediency, can I just say I go to the Sundry and buy four regular healing potions for 200? Sure. Does anybody else need to stock up on supplies or anything while we're in town? Would I be able to sell my old leather armor? Yeah, no reason you couldn't. Uh, I bought stuff last time just using the regular prices. Is that okay? Yep. Okay, okay. sure, sure. I'm good, I'm good. So, just so we can... <coughs> And get to them along, how much would that sell for? I don't know. Look it up in the compendium. 5 GP if the price is 10 GP. Yep. For the ladder. Go back to the end. Okay. Back at the end. Now what? Just so everyone knows, uh, Gilker may have threatened our lives. Um, I was trying to be nice. Uh, I might kill him later. We'll see. Anyway. anyway. Not too bad of a person. What are you talking about? We've already killed him. Why do we need to get him again? <laughs> oh, he threatened to send assassins out at us until uh, he runs out of coin. No, he threatened to send assassins at you until you ran out of coin. Well, as long as you remain in my proximity, I don't think they're going to be uh, too discerning whether or not you're uh... innocent. Yeah, you should probably kill him. Anyway, problem for another day. Yeah. So, are we heading out? I mean, we took a commission, unless you want to blow this guy off, but there's more money to be made. Yeah, let's let's go. Okay. So, as you guys... Uh, as you guys head out, like I said, it's a day and a half, so you get a long rest. Although I'm pretty sure everybody's already at full. Yeah. Um, eventually you come upon the Nettleby Ranch. 
and the Nettleby Ranch sprawls over a series of low rolling hills where the forest has been cleared away for crops of oats and barley. Um, you can see the Nettleby's prized livestock, which are sheep, ponies, and cattle, grazing in multitudes upon the hillside pastures. The ranch consists of a large two-story house and several low stalls and granaries. And in the distance, there is a large mound of earth rising over the horizon. There's a, its balding crown sparsely stubble with the charred remnants of trees. Oh, it does look like something's been burning something. Yeah, probably the fire witch. So we should go inside and ask for details with the no. Yeah. Um, I'm going to walk up to like the front maybe door. Before he does that, you know, just thinking out loud, really thinking about all this money. And it's not only that I didn't ask for enough, which is strange, but he agreed to it too easily. And to me, that makes it feel like he was never going to pay the amount and just agree to it up front anyway. I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah. Old, he probably thought you said a different price. Just, let's just get this over with. In order to mention it, it might be a trap to lure us in, in so maybe. I, I mean, people have got it out for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's just be cautious. Yeah. Well, sure, masked man, go introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so you're going to knock on the door now? Yep. Okay. You knock on the door, and there's no immediate reply, and eventually you hear um, the familiar voice of the old man at the at the inn. He shouts, I'm going to open the door! And then uh, eventually you see a, a female halfling, or I'm sorry, a female gnome, uh, comes and opens the door, and she's quite elderly herself but not quite as much as uh as wigan was and, and she she opens the door and she kind of claps excited she's like oh so very good i'm glad you're here oh we are glad to to help too if you oh. mind us entering no oh, yes of course please come in <laughs> 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 okay. Can I uh, investigate her in case she's not actually a woman with that voice? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just she's a gnome, you know, her voice is real high pitched. Uh, <laughs> I assume their house is relatively small. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, so most of you are going to have to kind of like duck down a little bit, but it's not too uncomfortable. So, and then once everybody kind of piles in, she starts, you know, uh, she's very matronly, very motherly. She starts immediately, can I offer you anything? Uh, I've got some some tea brewing on the kettle, and I've maybe made some cookies here. Uh, I'd love to give you anything, if, if, if I could. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I would have said some, some tea. Okay, so she goes about, uh, you know, she rushes off to the kitchen and starts bustling around and getting you guys your snacks and your drinks. And, the uh, gnomes are so, they're so cute and so tiny. It's, 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 it's so neat to see, see the gnomes. Ah, they're actually going to bring me tea. I'm interested to get the tea taste like it sounds so interesting. Okay. Uh, as you stand here, kind of like in the entrance to the house, you see that there are, you know, a, a large number uh, of gnomish children running around. Um, you can see a, a a little girl, maybe you know, maybe twelve years old. Um, you know, arguing with a little boy. Uh, you know, f shouting over toys. Um, you can see an older, um, an an older child, maybe. 
late teens, early 20s, who's kind of trying to get the kids to go off into another room so that the visitors can talk with, with Grandad. Um, and, and as you enter into the living room, you see Wiggum sitting there on a chair, and he has uh, a, another gnome with him, much younger, mid-20s, right? Um, and, the, and the two of them kind of stand, and the younger one comes up and introduces himself. Oh, hello. Yes. Uh, it's nice to meet you. I, I understand you're the ones that father had hired? Yes. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Uh, we need... We, um, I don't know if, if you're ready to go or if uh, you have questions or if you need anything, but I'd, I'd very much like to get this resolved as quickly as we can. Where... Do you know exactly where these fire witches come from? Uh, no. No, I don't actually. It's uh, been a, a long-standing superstition out here in the countryside that witches and fire and nastiness. And uh, it, it just recently moved in. It's very scary. Um, when you I say fire it's... witch, it's a witch that casts fire and not the which made a fire, right? I, I don't know. I haven't uh, seen it. I, I would assume so. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Um, uh, I'm... It's it's probably a cultist. Uh, How do they get into your farm? Do they just do you just hear them and then they're suddenly there, or do well, you see them? Okay. Well, or... again, we haven't seen them, right? It was roughly two weeks ago. The barrel mound went up in a blaze. And then a few days later, we started noticing a brand on all of our cattle. And we took turns guarding the livestock, but uh, slowly but surely, the brands continued to appear. It's obviously witchcraft. A brand? A brand, yes. Um, where is your cattle? Uh, they're outside in the field, obviously. You must have seen them coming in. Never seen, never seen a cow before. No, I never seen a cow. I'm going to go outside and like look at all of their the cows. Okay, all all the cows have a scorch mark burnt into uh, like their rear flank, right? And the scorch mark it looks like this. Uh, More bloody symbols. <laughs> Um, so, you guys have uh, any idea where uh, this witch is? Yes, 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 yes. Here, um, and uh, he kind of like pats his chest and shows you like he's wearing like leather armor. He's like, "I'm coming with you." Okay. Oh, uh, you, you're not needed, young man. Well, um, he, if he can guide us, just, just point uh, his. No, no, y y yes, that exactly. I'm. I have no intention of uh, putting myself in harm's way, but I, I can show you. Sure. Yeah. But uh, before that, uh, how about half of the payment upfront, since we're about to put ourselves in moral danger or mortal danger, and uh, you know, see that you're serious about us going and clearing this barrel out. Half of the payment up front and he kind of turns around with a confused look on his face towards the old man in the chair father was was that the agreed upon arrangement and the old man he's kind of like wrinkling his lips because he's got no teeth he's like, mm -hmm. no why are you trying to change the deal just assessing the seriousness of the situation. We're fully intending to d fulfill this job. I'm just mm. concerned about your seriousness. Seriousness of the situation? It's like, this is my family's livelihood. My children and my grandchildren's safety. Why would I not be serious? I don't know you that well. And this is a contract work. So, I mean, this is how I operate. <laughs> oh. 
surely you understand the concept of mercenaries. I understand the concept of we have a contract, and I expected you to honor it. Fine, fair enough. We, we did negotiate, though, for, for some healing potions or some, some sort of other provisions on top of that. So do you have those here that we can take? No, he gave us money for No, I, I have those. I, if we need them, I'll distribute them. <laughs> okay, so they just kind of look around. All right, let, let's go, then. I've had enough of sitting around here. Okay. And so the uh, son which I don't think I told you his name, but it is doo -doo -doo, uh, Bertram. Uh, Bertram kind of gears up and, and comes out with you, okay? And he starts leading you like it's... Like you could have found it on your own. Like he just... Like he goes out from the farm and takes you directly to the large burning mound of earth <laughs> that's behind the, the farm, right? Um... However, he does take you to something very peculiar. In the in the side of this giant dirt mound, there are massive uh, there are massive there's a massive archway that appears to have been sundered, a and there's a a hallway that leads down into into the ground. It's like there, that's where she is. She's got to be in there. What? Inside check. Yep, yep, that sounds right. <laughs> He's like, yes, I see, after the burning and the brands, I came out here. And as I stood here at the mouth of this doorway, I heard whispers coming from the darkness. I've always heard legends of witches that, that were said to roam these hills. It would be terrible if there is one so close to our farm. Is it? Is it That's just? Different. Are we? Sorry to interrupt, you guys. Are we just Uzla and this and this guy now? It, outside. What do you mean? Like, is it just us and Bertram outside? Like yes. The party yeah, there? the old man didn't come. All right. Can I try to quietly cast Soda Truth around us and ask him some questions? Yeah, I mean, you can try. What do you want me to do to quietly cast a spell? Well, if you're trying to cast a spell without being detected, there would be sleight of hand. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, so so <laughs> you start trying to mutter the words quietly and, and make the incantation. Uh, however, he, he notices right away. He's like, what are you doing? Uh, 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 nothing, and I'll cast it anyway. Okay. So, so he looks at all of you. He feels the 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 falling of the magic zone, right? And and he immediately throws his hands up in the air and he shouts, "Ah, it's the witch!" And he runs. Fucking grab him! Grab him now! Sorry, I saw. Grab him! <laughs> oh, no, no, don't. Why are we doing this? Release. What? How far away is he? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you know. Yeah, as with his reaction, he took the he dashed. So let's say thirty feet. Are you kidding me, folks? Yep. Uh, let's just just do the job. <laughs> <laughs> just stop it's that. It's fine. We'll <laughs> explain it later. Oh. I don't even think we should try to bother explaining it. We're going to get... Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's easy. We'll just say that we're preparing to go in. He does this all the time. It was a defensive yeah. measure. Yeah, yeah. Just, just... Okay. Uh... Lying is so much easier than telling the truth. Yeah, you're right, but... Technically, you're in a zone of truth, so... Ooh. Can I make the save? <laughs> <laughs> There's I mean, no... we're all in the zone of truth, and I've just... Nah, nah, nah. Okay, who's the cultist? No reason you couldn't make the save. Uh, yeah, now that it not, nah, you're all in. Are you now, or have you ever been a member of a cult? <laughs> <laughs> Fine. 
Oh, I, I really wanted to say the truth. What's a DC <laughs> It's a wisdom. Uh, 14 DC. Oh, is it, is it wisdom instead? Yeah. No, that's for old person. No, it's wisdom. <laughs> oh, why why are we doing this? <laughs> I really wanted to fail. It could have been so interesting. Uh, okay. I don't want psychic damage on my head, is... Pikmin. <laughs> So all you guys, I'm gonna ask if Folk Five is really crazy. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? So it's all you joke. guys are uh, at the at the entrance to the Barrow Mound, right? Then there's the big stone slab blocking your way, but you can see that it is cracked, and that you can move around and gain entrance inside. Um. Emma moves inside the inside the hallway. Okay. I'll follow after her. Uh, how? What's the light like in there? It's dark. Like standing here looking down, it's just a black mouth. Great. Um, I'll take a look then. I could be just fine, but um, I guess I'll stealth as I enter and try and move down the hall. Okay. I'm going to switch my mask and put on my mask with a happy face on it. He didn't say he was turning away. I'm going to take a peek at his face. Well, he's facing forward. <laughs> <laughs> Surround him. Look at his face. <laughs> what does it look like? What does it look is like? It, is it like that? Well, is it is it a mess? Is this is this? Oh, what gross! <laughs> what? <laughs> like a dead avocado. Yeah. <laughs> so Roven and Emma have went in. What are the rest of you doing? Can I? Oh. Did you say the stone was cracked at, at like the entrance? Yeah, you can. If does you it walk, look like it's been. Forced or broken recently? It does. It does. The fracture does look very fresh. Does it look like it's been forced aside, or does it just look like it's been cracked straight away? Um, I don't understand. He said that it was. So the stone's just cracked enough so we can get in, and it's not been moved in any way at all. It's just been broken off. Right. It's broken, not moved. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm going to light uh, a torch for myself because I now, can't see the now walk with Finn because he has the torch. Okay. And... Did, did you do it to yourself? There, macro, click your token, and then in your macros, set light to torch. What? What? What token? You. Your token. Uh, but, but, but I don't see my token. There's nothing we're on the splash screen. screen. Yeah, we're on the splash screen, Daddy. Aha! That's a reason why. I was wondering why you guys were so confused. There's a map we're supposed to be looking at? Yeah. Nice. Pro, pro DM is pro. I do this all the time. Uh... Ooh. How do you do the set light thing? It's a button. Click, click the button. You click the button that says set light. Uh, right. And there is no way to 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 uh, set it off. Is that plant holding fire? That seems dangerous. <laughs> Wait, yeah, <laughs> yes. Are your leaves not dry. You you click Good yourself time. again and then you click set light and then you click no light source to turn it off. He moisturizes okay. daily. <laughs> um, nice. That, this is pretty cool. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. Uh, tall monoliths line the earthen corridor that connects the barrow's entrance to the burial chamber far within. The air is cold and heavy and with the scent of ash. Can I listen down the corridor? See, see if I hear any voices. Or... You hear absolutely nothing. 
Give me one second though. Do 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 do. Does this uh? Is so it's like a cavern, right? Pretty much. Yes. Does it look like it's been here before? No, the entire cavern sprung up overnight. Oh. <laughs> well, oh. I think I see in the distance. All right. So as you guys begin to walk, um, little motes of flame begin to emerge between the stones, illuminating the hallway briefly. I'm going to pull out my swords. Did you say that these were monoliths, Daddy? Yes. Is there uh, anything on them? No, they're just giant stone, uh, like, you know, think, like think, blank... think Stonehenge. Yeah. yeah, just big, okay. yeah, big stones. Is that a coffin? Uh, it is a coffin. Can right. we see anything moving, or can I hear anything moving uh, from this vantage point, or hear anything? No, right now the still it's it's uh, deathly quiet in here. All right, I, th I think you guys get the point, right? You guys walk in, little fires just light up through the tomb. All right, um, there's a crude feldstone arch, arch that forms the entrance to the burial chamber. In three branching alcoves are three scorched altars, one of a tiger, another of an elk, and another of a bear. In the center of the chamber is a stone uh, bier, upon which rests a broken and blackened skeleton, its skull and limbs scattered about the chamber. The air of the sepulchre is deathly cold and scented with ash. Um, actually... It, it is so, so impossibly cold within this chamber. As you all enter the room, I need a round of constitution saves, please. Unless you are immune to the effects of extreme cold. Okay, is that everybody? No. Mine's lagging. New guy. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, <laughs> okay, so Brother Godfrey go. and Tapio, uh, you both gain one level of exhaustion as you are uh, trying to cope with the extreme uh, change in temperature here. Oh, that's fun. Do plant elementals feel cold? Yeah, aren't plants necessarily... Like, all right, right, very right, susceptible right. to cold. All right. Anyway, so so walking in, you realize there is no way it can be this cold in this chamber. There's definitely something supernatural at work here. You wanted to say something, Tapio? I was thinking about the this. Oh, you went with winter. Yes. Okay. Uh, no. Yeah, I said if you were resistant to. Okay, so yeah, you don't get the exhaustion. You're fine. It doesn't bother you at all. Alright. So, as you guys are, um, are are standing in this chamber, kind of looking around at, in wonder at everything that's happening, the temperature begins to drop even further. And with a crackling sound, frost coats the entire chamber. Flames on the walls and in the hall go out and a point of blue light appears over over the sarcophagus in the center of the room and expands into a faintly humanoid form. The bones in the tomb, as well as the antlers on the elk altar, stir, then fly into the light. In a flash, a massively built but very pale human male stands before you, his face darkly bearded, and his head crowned with the antlers. His milky eyes burn with blue flame as he casts his gaze around the room at you. His voice is, his voice is deep and resonates throughout the chamber. He says, I return from warrior's rest among the spirits. Find my tomb burned and my bones desecrated. 
I know the desecrators are not among you, but who are you and why are you here? We are here trying to find the, the ones who desecrated your tomb. To be frank. On whose orders have you come? Your orders of the gnomes who live nearby here. At the mention of the gnomes, he kind of turns his gaze to you. Why? Because they offered us the job to find the uh, a witch who was burning their crops and branding his uh, their their carol. So as he stands here, <clears throat> he he kind of looks around. And um, you see, he, he becomes uh, increasingly agitated. He holds out his hand, and a giant longsword appears. Maybe if I can drag this to the... Please? I don't like the look. <laughs> you can do it. I don't know why. It's not letting me. I believe in you. I mean, like, Roll20 is not letting me do it. Stop rooting for him to murder us. He's gonna use that longsword and kill us. <laughs> hey, there we go. So, so he, he gains that longsword, right? And, and he kind of stabs it into the stone. And he says, This, this atrocity will not go unpunished. We are the proud Uthgart tribe. I have been here undisturbed for centuries. It is a great affront to my people to use magic within within such a sacred place. And here, and he points to all the flames around the chamber. Somebody have put those there to spite me. They have desecrated my tomb to rile me. I will find them. And he begins to walk out of the tomb. Um. Uh, wait, 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 wait a second. Uh, <clears throat> uh, do do you have any idea who might be responsible for the, this? He turns his eyes towards you again. And as he does, you, you feel that, that burning hatred just radiating off of him. He's like, my entire purpose is to destroy the people that have defiled my tomb. I do not know their name, but I know. And he looks down the hall. He stands just outside. Oh boy. And almost in me on cue... Uh, the sunlight coming through the barrow's entry hall dims, as if a shadow has been cast on the entrance. Right afterward, a grinding of stone is followed by a cascade of dirt and stone in the hall. The, the exit to the tomb has collapsed. Where is Pigman? I figured this was going to happen, but I came in to look instead of holding my position. <laughs> Oh no. That that doesn't sound good at all. Not not at all, one bit. But why? Why would they bury us? That's weird. Did you guys do something? Um uh, the, 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 this type of thing happens from time to time. Mm -hmm. It's traps and people trying to kill us. Uh, you know, the drill. So we, Pikmin, you might want to move back a little bit. Um, as the the rubble collapses, you can see some of the stray stones begin to roll forward. A and these are, are boulders, four or five tons each. And they move to the front of the burial chamber 
and they begin to mash together to coalesce and form a humanoid shape as a as a giant earth elemental uh, is now in the chamber and I need everybody to roll initiative please Okay. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Who do who missed? One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know why mine isn't in there. Cause you suck. Hey, I rolled from the token. What do you want? What did you What did you roll? Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. There it goes. Oh wait, no. That's no, me. that was me. Okay, and womp womp. Alrighty. So uh, as this elemental materializes, right, you can see that this thing is like reaching out and it's smashing into the walls, and this is the reason the tunnels collapsed. Someone summoned this elemental, and they collapsed a tunnel and sent it in to kill you. And as this thing approaches, the the revenant kind of steps up, and, and he just just calmly like walks past it. The elemental's not interested in him. He has no interest in the elemental. Instead, he just goes to the collapsed tunnel and starts hacking away at the stones with his sword. And you can tell that he is impossibly strong. With every swing of his sword, he cleaves through massive stones. And given time, he very well could clear the tunnel. But in the meantime, there's a giant elemental trying to kill you. <laughs> so, Emma, you are first in the turn tracker. What would you like to do? Oh, jeez. I guess I'll move up to him and try to attack. Where is... I was going to say, I thought I had the sheet open already. I guess not. Ten is a miss. More accurately, you manage to hit it, but but your puny your puny iron short sword just kind of scrapes along and doesn't do much of anything. I'll uh, use my bonus action to attack. Yep, same thing again. And I'll use it. I need to keep. Well, I can't do that in my. Okay. Finn. Finn, uh, we'll move closer and try to hit him with his rapier. Okay. Uh, you stab it, but you don't penetrate the the hard stone of the elemental. Okay. So. Uh, Finn's takes out his dagger and try to hit him again okay and you are successful Sneak attack. and after that uh, then we move back to here and that's it folk far Fofar will turn to Pikmin and say, you better be ready for this, and channel divinity for him. So, path to the grave on on the, the elemental. elemental. So, the next attack against him deals double damage. 
And that's the, my turn. The next attack that hits him, right? So the next time you or an ally attack, no, not the attack that hits him, just the next attack period. No, it's just the next yeah. attack that it, it says the damage. So I'm assuming it means that hits him. Well, it just says the the next time you or an ally attack it doesn't. That's uh, if it hits, it's double damage. At least that that's how I'm interpreting it. Um. So does it have to be a hit attack, or can it be a spell that he has to save against? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, yeah. right? It's just the next attack against him. Yeah, but if you attack and you miss, it's it's a wash. All right, so that was his action. And I've I've seen him do this before, so I'm like, okay. So I'm going to hex him. Okay. Great, another dot. Uh, negative on strength checks. Okay. And then? That's a hit. So it's 16 and, t and 10 for a total of 26. And does 16 hit? No, it does not. Bummer. Yeah, your Don't first attack. Nice your your first attack hits him and, and seems to do quite a bit. The second attack, he just raises his arm and blocks it, and it does nothing. Bummer. That'd been nice. Tapio. Okay, I'm going to use the flame in my hand. Okay. It just hits him, and he, there's a little scorch mark on the stone, but it doesn't do anything. Okay, as a bonus action, I'm going to cast Shilel on my hand. Okay. So, so for the rest of us, what does that look like when you cast Shilel on your arm? Does is it like glowing, or is it like? Let's say that it's glowing. Okay. <laughs> Brother Godfrey. Moving in and uh, try to. I bought a. What do you call it? A Warhammer. So I'll try to give it a whack. Let's see it. It's a bit like lagging a bit. 15? 15. 15. Uh, you just. Thunk. You hit the Warhammer against the stone and it does nothing. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Alright, that's it. Roven? What is the creature size? Is it large? Large. It's pretty huge. Okay. Right there. Okay. Attack. Ten is a miss. Twenty six is not. I'm gonna spend a superiority dice and attempt to trip. So 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You didn't need to link it. I know what it is. Okay. Oh, no. And didn't pick him and said he had disadvantage on strength checks. Because he hexed him. He did say that. Mm -hmm. However, uh, he's not immune to prone. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Fourteen eight. Ha ha. <laughs> so the earth elemental falls and makes a, a massive shake go throughout the chamber. Uh you three in melee range, I need all of you to make strength checks. Two. Dex? Strength. Roven falls prone. Uh, you're you're not. Oh wait, yes you are. Uh, you fall prone. This would count as a uh, the exhaustion effects of this, right? What is level one exhaustion? Uh, ability check. Ability check. No, this is not an ability check. This okay. is this is save. Alright, you pass. 
All right. So the elemental fell, and then the resulting uh, the resulting shake knocked two of the party members prone as well. Rovin, do you have anything else? Could I stand up? Do you have movement left? I thought I thought you've already moved like twenty feet. Yeah, I have movement left. Oh wait, no, I wouldn't be able to. No, Never mind, cause it's half movement, right? Okay. So, knocking him prone, he's going to stand up, shoves himself to his feet, and then you see it lift up one of its massive arms, and it's going to try and bring it down on Rovin. It did not like you stabbing it at all. And smash. Oh. I had it. Yeah, you're prone. Okay. Does it matter? Is this, are you trying yeah, to say no, that 25 like, misses you? Just take the damage. I just confused. I forgot. That's right. and then he's going to try and smash uh, Rovin again. He's not dumb. Oh, wow. Oh, what a bad roll. I know, right? Uh, Yep, that's the end of that. Alright, uh... Guess I'll... I'll just try and attack again. You're gonna stand up, right? Uh, yeah, stand up. Okay. I don't wanna lay on the ground. Fire. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Roll damage. Uh... How do I do that? I just click the thing. In the, in the chat down. window? Where it says short mm -hmm. sword? You click it? Okay. Advantage toggle. Whisper toggle. Auto roll damage and crit. Ammo tracking on. Exhaustion tracking on. There we go. Now we're ready to party. Cool. And I'll, uh. I'll just bonus action attack it again. 14's a miss. Finn. Finn will move to here. And then try to stab the, the rock. A stab it you did, buddy. Yeah, sneak attack. And stab again. Oh no. Oh yes. You lose your grip as you attack. Roll a dex check or drop your weapon. Okay. You don't drop and your then, weapon. And then I'll move back to here. And that's it. Holy crap, I have two nat 20s. I just looked over to the right and I remembered some, oh, some malevolent twitch got disco. Gave me those at the start of the stream. Alright. Folkware. Thinking in his head that Disco is not malevolent, he's gonna cast Guiding Bolt at level two. Oh, oh. Folkware also has a net twenty. <laughs> okay, Folkware. So guiding bolt at level two. I need you to roll me five five more D sixes. Twenty forty six. Ooh wee. And the next attack has advantage, Pikmin. Just oh yeah, I see it. it. I see the setup here. Pickles. Pickles. Cheese. Pickles. Uh, the second one doesn't have advantage, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Does the 18 hit, by the way? Yeah. Nice. Tap you. Okay, I'm going to walk close and use poison spray again. Poison spray? You said? Yes. Okay, uh, you hit him with the poison, but it has zero effect. Okay. 
I'm going to flee. <laughs> Godfrey? Just another hammer. 16 Does misses. Miss that. Roven? You see it glaring at you. Now. I don't know whether I should do the nice thing or the meat. I'm going to disengage. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, I, I stood up. Yeah, which means you can't move that far. Bam. And then I'll second wind as bonus action. Okay. Hmm. Well, he ran away. Leaves only you two left. So, let me just go ahead and remove those net 20s because we're going to use them both right now. <laughs> Attack, Brother Godfrey. Oh my god. It's a nat 20. Brother Godfrey, you're taking 17 total. Alright. It's a wrong damage dice. Eight eight? Yeah. Oh, I did. I was using the best policy. I'm sorry. I hit the wrong <laughs> key. You're taking 24 total. Look at that. Oh, that's, that's for me, right? Yeah, you. Alright. <laughs> Honesty is the best. Huh? All right, and then uh, let's hit the let's hit the new cat. Turns around and hits Emma for a total of eighteen. Oh, those ones! I know. I've rolled so so crappy. Curse of Strahd got it all yesterday. Yeah. Yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh. Okay, I'll, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and attack again. Yeah. Oh, uh, that is a hit. And as you stab through the earth elemental, um, its leg breaks off from the main structure and it falls to the ground. And the impact from hitting the ground a second time causes it to shatter and it dies I thought we were all going to go prone again <laughs> <laughs> oh I didn't get that far yet I'm kidding I'm kidding uh, well one problem solved so as uh, as the um the, the Revenant has been chipping away at the rubble pile. Uh, you can see that, you know, just just using only his sword, he has managed to cut through the rock and stone, and he has made a hole large enough for, for a man to fit through. And uh, he walks through to the surface. And everybody I else. Follow him I would right imagine. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all walked to the surface. Thank you, Wolf Gray. I love you. Thank you. Uh. Oh dear. Whenever you hear a DM say thank you, does that not make you more worried? <laughs> it certainly <laughs> does. So you walk to the surface, and you find yourself surprised to see there are a a dozen barbarians standing around the mouth to the barrow. Forming a semicircle, uh, two are mounted on horses, and all near they they simply do ignore they they ignore your arrival. Wow, well, I can talk. They ignore your arrival. They don't even pay you any attention. Their eyes are one hundred percent fixed on Javor, the the revenant that that is resurrected. But who stood in the zone of truth? Because it's still there. Yeah, they're all they're all in the zone of truth too. Sure. Uh, they uh, one of the riders 
her forehead marked with a tattoo that looks like elk horns, hops down off of her mount, and, and she walks up and she grabs Javor's hands and drops to her knee. My daughter's vision was true. This one is the ancient. He is one of us. She kneels before Javor, and her her fellows follow her lead, all getting down and kneeling before the revenant. We come to see you avenge the Ancient One. Javer nods with grim approval. You are in time for blood. The Desecrator dwells there, and he points over the horizon towards the farm. I knew it! it. (laughs) I told you it wasn't a woman. No, they were. So uh, after he points, the uh, Javor begins to run towards the gnomish farm. The barbarians follow at breakneck speed, and uh, you as they begin to run towards the farm, you see them pulling out long swords and battle axes, and, and Javor shouts, "Leave none of them alive!" They will pay for their desecration. Oh my gosh, Jesus. They're going to start with that family? Oh, that's going to be good. good. Uh, what? I'm a little bit confused. <laughs> I'm going to roll with it. I like where this is going. <laughs> I can uh, go and watch. <laughs> you know, I don't normally agree with you, but I like what's coming out of your mouth right now. No, stop. <laughs> This is, this is this is not right. Actually, it's not right. And I'm gonna go watch. <laughs> <laughs> like, think about it, Roman. They agreed to three thousand gold. Something was wrong with them. See, he's even agreeing with me. What? What is going? Oh, whatever. Where? Where? Bye. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> I, I'm going to run towards the farm. <clears throat> okay. So I think everyone's in agreement. We're all going to the farm. Just everybody's yeah. kind of split on what to do once you get there. Yeah, yeah we're going to the farm. Much. Okay, so we get to the farm. Um, I'm going to put us here for now. Ha! Huh, who's that? Uh. <laughs> Boop. Oh. Alright, so we're at the farm, right? The, you hear the barbarians. Some of them are lighting torches and throwing them at the structure. Others are uh, they're they're grabbing like the they 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 bring out all of the family right, they, and they force them down onto the lawn ahead of you. So so all of the gnomes are just kind of laying face down on the, on their belly. They have their hands up in the air. Um, the the women and children they're crying. Please stop! I don't know what you're doing. Why are you trying to hurt us? Uh, and, and meanwhile, they drag out the the old man and the son, right? The um, hex for the names. Bertram or something. Bertram and Wigan. Yep, and they bring them out, and uh, you know they have them standing there, and, and um, Joven raises up his long sword, and. He's getting ready to to lower it down at Bertram's neck. Wait, wait. (laughs) Are you sure these... He turns and looks at you, Rovin. Why would you deny me my vengeance? Are you sure these are the people that desecrated you? My vengeance and my rage has brought me from beyond the veil of death. My entire purpose is to destroy the person that desecrated my tomb. And I know where they are, to the ends of the earth. This is without the a doubt the person responsible. And he points to the old man and to Bertram. What did you guys do to that, uh, uh, that skeleton to, to bring this upon yourselves? Bertram raises his hands. And he's like, 
You should have never went to the Sacred Stone Monastery. Oh, so you guys are cultists. <laughs> you guys are cultists. <laughs> yeah, I was that, a trap. Ah, uh, then I don't mind this happening. Uh, and I'm going to shape change into one of their monks, all covered uh, in blood. Do you mind, do you mind if I, I, I give it a poke to you? Uh, <laughs> I give it a poke. He's like, but wait, wait, they had nothing to do with it. And he looks over to the wife and the kids. It's like, they're innocent. Mm, now you're right. talking. Jo talk? Joven, the revenant. He, he makes no effort. He's like, I cannot rest until I have these two's heads. Well, I tell you what. The, the rest can go free. That's fair. Wow. Okay. However, the other barbarians begin to laugh. <laughs> no, no. There will be no survivors. We kill them all. I mean, if you don't say kill them all. Where's the honor in killing a defense family? I mean, that's just... That's just asinine. I mean, what, what's, what story can you sing about some such event? I mean, we went to a hard house and we, women and we are Uthgard. We don't care for art and stories. We care for gold and meat. We will kill them. We will raid the farm, and then we will we will celebrate our victory. That's hardly a victory. I mean, kill these two guys. Obviously, they're evil and they. You see that uh, the the leader, the female with the elk tattoo across her forehead, she kind of like she's she's listening to you and she's nodding, like showing that she's like listening. But then, like halfway through your spiel, there, uh, Emma, she lets out a, a swift kick at one of the children. Hey, come on now! Don't... Just gonna grow up to be cultists. <laughs> <laughs> well, now they are probably. No, we've been, we've seen plenty of these these type these people. They, that's all they do. They don't they don't believe in rationale. They have served their cults and then they come after us. Reuven kind of like twitches at the sight of her kicking a child. She's like, "Fine, fine, you we do it your way. I'll make it quick." And she pulls out her long sword and she raises it up like she's about to stab it at, at the youngest. Do it. Can I can I, can I grab her? Oh god. <laughs> the Revenant said kill them all. Let them kill them all. No, the Revenant said kill the guilty parties. Uh, he said yeah, slaughter them yeah, all, no survivors. No, no, that was the, the chieftain. Oh, kill them all, fuck it. Uh, 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 guys. Stop myself. <laughs> I can't stop myself. And you want to kill everyone else. Doesn't it seem a little counterintuitive? Okay, okay. You are look, 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 look. Somebody already said they wanted to take action against what they're witnessing, right? So, if you would like to participate, roll initiative. In the meantime, let's put everyone on the map so that we have some context, right? Wait. <laughs> ha, whoopsie! Okay, so there's everybody, and we're gonna put you. Stop moving. Wait, where did? You... Yeah, I'm not here. Yeah, well, you were. All right. all right, we're gonna put you guys down here, right? Because you're still a little ways off looking at all this. Uh, and then. Right, give me one second while I bring up all these other tokens, because there's a lot of them. Oh, hey, I got the death blow in that earth elemental, didn't I? Yes, you did. Uh, I got seven temporary hit points from it. Mm, okay. Put that in a red circle. Oh. I don't even know what I'm looking for. I know what they are. Here's our raiding party. Four, eight, 
Nine. Oh, that's a lot of people. Ten. Yeah, I remember I told you there were literally a dozen of them that were circled around, right? And then the freaking thing there, bing bing. Uh, we've got tribes. Chieftain returns. Uthgard Vengeance. There we go. Ten. Berserker. There's the Chieftain. And the Chieftain is on a war horse. It looks like a zebra to me. It's it has armor. <laughs> totally a zebra. <laughs> You're a zebra. Just stole it from the zoo. Look, totally a horse in armor. <laughs> <laughs> it still looks like a zebra. <laughs> you look like a zebra. Okay, and uh, we can't forget our revenant. And then, is it Civ? No. What is it? Dang it. Oh, Villager? <sighs> Killing me. Commoner. Commoner. There we go. I couldn't remember what the name of the token was. Uh, halfling, halfling. Sure. There's the ma. <laughs> and the old man. It's totally a halfling. Believe me, I know these things. Not Nigel. <laughs> and the oldest son. And then, why not, for simplicity's sake? <laughs> Mom and the three kids. They all look. They look. They look very identical. Okay. So hopefully, uh, roll. Who? Wait. Who said they were taking action? You're supposed to roll initiative. I think Roven said he was grabbing someone to stop. Uh, that, that, that was me. That was me. He's got a little bit of buyer's remorse right now. <laughs> uh, quick question: uh, Where am I putting the temporary hit points? The red bubble. Okay. I did not say I was grabbing. Oh, that's what the red bubble's for. Yeah. Yeah. Heal the party. So let me see. Oh, they're not. They're not really hurt so we'll just say with uh 60 10 you can heal them the full -da. i don't think the party wants any of this because they're like <laughs> it's just brother godfrey in the in the tracker right now i think they're content to just let you die <laughs> you're probably wondering how i got myself into this mess <laughs> Record scratch, freeze, freeze, freeze frame. frame. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> You're probably wondering how I get here. <laughs> Alright, well, if that's that. So, Finn, you are going to be the first in combat. Uh, let's remember the chieftain was standing over the children here, the revenant is standing over here next to the other two and the other warriors are all just kind of they're off looting the house burning down the fields doing general barbarian things okay it doesn't matter if you were being aggressive or not if you wanted a turn in the events to come yep. then you need to roll initiative Of which it is currently Finn's turn. 
and, and he's not doing anything. Uh, okay. Uh, so I will say to the revenant, uh, uh, would you mind if we engage with the uh, barbarians? He doesn't answer. He, he is entirely, singularly focused on. Uh, Dang, I can never remember the name. Wigan. Nettle fleas. Wigan. Wigan and Bertram. his son. Bertram. They're all they're all nettle uh, nettle bees. Like all the the that's the family name. Yeah, so he's focused on the nettle bees. He just that's no, easier than remembering. No, because he name. doesn't want to focus on these ones. He's focused specifically on these ones. On the bad guys. Then I will say to the uh, chieftain, uh, "We, uh, you don't need to kill the the children, nor the woman. You can raid the 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 farm, but uh, don't kill those guys." So you're gonna try and be diplomatic. The uh, the the chieftain yells back, "Oh, we know. We don't have to kill anybody." And she gives you a big, crazed smile. But it's so much fun. <sighs> well, I will say, uh, though, uh, this is not going to end well. I didn't make it on the tracker. There yeah, you are. Oh, there. I am. Okay. If if you roll initiative and you don't make it on the tracker, it's because you weren't clicking on your token. Okay. So uh, after seeing the response of the shift chieftain, uh, Finn will take out his rapier. And yes. Move to yes. Yeah. First barbarian. Alright, hit. Hit. Oh, so we're really doing this? <laughs> and that is a dead barbarian. Do they have any and ranged then... weapons on them? Mm, doing a uh, glance around the battlefield, you see most of them are armed with melee weapons. But you do see a couple that are wielding... Spears? Spears. Okay. Then, then I'll bonus action dash to, to here. And that's it. As a matter of fact, they're all wielding spears. It's only the uh, the chieftain that has the axe and the revenant that has the sword. Okay. Roven? Right here, and stab it. Stab one next to Stab him. Stab him good. And then wait. Spin the wait. Stab it. Who next to you? I said the. Um, okay. Well, no, you pinged it, and I wasn't looking. That's just why I asked. All right. Stabbed. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, I don't know. You're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to. Um, Spin the spear, you already dice there and triple. Okay, so we take is that say seven? Yep. Seven? And what's he what's the dice for? Um to trip him string check. I just did that wrong. Plus There we go. Okay, now we good. Strength. Pass. Thank you. Okay. And then seven with off Okay, so four. Done. Tapio. 
I'm going to move Move and attack with my hand With the shillelagh Twenty-four, four, nine. Yep, that's it. Finish. And that's all. Brother Godfrey. Yeah, I'll just run up to the chieftain again and try to cut him down. So 16 will hit. That's it. It's going to get real ugly here in like one turn. Uh, Emma. Okay, I'm just going to move up to this one and attack. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, that is a dead... That is a dead warrior. Why isn't it? Cool. There we go. Alright, uh, I'm going to continue moving up to this one. And uh, use the bonus action to attack again. Okay. 11 is a miss. I'm going to spend the key point where it blows. Okay. Uh, that'll, well, it's not four times. You're level four, right? But Sorry, I first attack. Uh, yeah, the first key attack point, was enough for and then attack two more. Bonus is action to attack again. I spend the key point for two more attacks, right? No, 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 because no, it's okay. Um, after your first attack, you can either bonus attack, attack one more time, or use a key point and then bonus oh. action attack two times. Derp, so it's it, it's always either two or three. Okay, so then yeah, it's just two. Sorry. Yep. Or three. Sorry. Three. Yep. Which that that will hit for seven. Cool. And, uh, nothing matters, but my seven temporary hit points refreshed when I killed that last one. Okay. Now, the barbarians. So, barbarians are gonna do barbarian things. Uh, let's get, do the ones that are furthest away. They're gonna run. Ah, oh, so close. They'll run here. There. There. Those three, since they're they won't get in melee range, they're gonna throw their spears at uh, eeny meeny money Finn, brother Godfrey, and Emma. Finn. Brother Godfrey, Emma. Alright, so I think all three of those miss? Yep. Poop. Okay. Uh, then, we have tribal warriors that will be in melee range. One, two, three, one, two, this one here hasn't moved. Uh, right there. Four. So four warriors stabbing uh, with their spears two-handed. And we're going to attack Finn. Right? Is there me, one over... Me? No, not you. I'm sorry. Uh, Brother Godfrey, I meant. All right. Okay. And then Brother Godfrey again. Miss. Where's the other one? Missed him. Oh, uh, two by Emma. Miss and Ooh. hit for nine. And then the berserk. Hey, man, Roven. There we go. I don't have to pick on. Uh... <laughs> don't don't have to pick on Godfrey. Uh, the the chieftain is gonna whip herself into a, a f oh I do have a net twenty okay let's get rid of that 
<laughs> Let, let's go ahead and smack uh, Roven. Hiya! And an extra D12 from the crit. I'll be fine, probably. Yeah, you yeah, can. Yeah. No. Take 24. I'm fine. Is that a D10 or a D12? 12. Um, that was a reckless attack, so all attacks against the Chieftain have advantage. Pikmin! Oh, sigh. They're a folk bar. This is, this is just dumb. But here we are. I'm gonna hex the Chieftain. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hi. <laughs> Woo-wee! Uh, 8, 16, 19, 20, 31, 34. Did I count all that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And a roll in the spell crit. Your spell attack hits with such extreme force that the target is knocked prone. All right. Double advantage. <laughs> Finished? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> Finn. Finn. I'll move to here. And Rapier. Hit. And Sneak. <laughs> and I'll move to here. And that's it. Roman? Oh, I'm gonna stab at the prone guy. Yeah. For four? Trip attack. <laughs> <laughs> he gets buried. <laughs> okay. And then are you finished? You. Okay, I'm going to move here and cast Thunder Rave on level 2. Okay, uh, in your journal, you, at the very top, you'll see it. It says Area of Effect Templates. Just reach in there, find a, a color and size that's appropriate, and then place the Thunder Wave where, where it's going so that we can see who all is affected, okay? Okay. Okay. Is that where you intend to put it? I think that spell casts it like on my position. No. No, no, no. Uh cube spells unless it says they're centered on you like they 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 go like this like thunder wave is cast like like a blast like that like like you're in the center of the face but you're not in the wave like you're not hurting yourself so uh where were you originally cuz you you had to move up to that spot right I was in this location. So I see. You walked up, like, through Roven. So what? if you still wanted to do that, I, I would don't... say you could move here. But then you, you leave engagement from the Berserker. But then you place it there. That's great. Berserker's on the ground. He's yeah. not taking any of me. Alright, cool. We're good. We good, fam. And let's roll some dice. I should probably look at the chat so I can see what you rolled for Thunder Wave. Oh boy. Uh, so 10 damage, DC 14 on two tribal warriors and the Berserker. Well, the Berserker even if he no, he could, he could live. Okay. 
what is it? Uh, con save. He fails and dies. So the chieftain is dead. Then the tribal warriors. Maybe. Uh, both fail and take 10 each. That was productive. All right, are you finished? Yes, the spell pushes them 10, uh, ten feet. Oh, right. And that's all. Brother Godfrey. I'll just uh, hit the guy next to me. I don't know about you, but that is very distinctly female. <laughs> eh, guys. <laughs> <laughs> isn't, wow. wait, isn't guy? Isn't guy like just refers to person? No. <laughs> it could be used. I mean, that's how I use it. <laughs> but pretty sure guy is a masculine pronoun. Some All right. people get offended by by guy. <laughs> I was just joking. Listen here, buddy. <laughs> yeah, pal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not your pal, friend. Uh, yes, 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 we've all seen the bit. Okay. It's, <laughs> all right. Uh, hit for eight here. I think I already did it, right? No, I did not. Yeah. All right. Uh, and Emma, way over here. Okay, I'm going to attack the bloodied one. Uh, hit and kills. temporary hit points back. Yep. Alright, I'll uh, spend a key point and attack the guy in front of me. For twice. <laughs> yes. the, the barbarian. The barbarian is in front of me. Uh, will be attacked twice. Okay, yes. Stop linking the picture. <laughs> what? What do you mean? I didn't do nothing. Uh, 23, 13. Those are actually, those are all hits. For 16 damage, we'll hit and kill the other barbarian. And then I'll, she'll use her movement to move here. We can do that, Fulcar. Okay, so you move up here and then end turn. Tribal Warriors. Who do we have left? One, two, three, four, four. All right. Uh, let's go. Rah! And one, two. There was this one going here, right here. And we're gonna stab some people. Finn, nope. Uh, Tapio, nope. Brother Godfrey, uh oh, no, definitely not. Uh, Emma. Okay, well, they're so demoralized by the loss of their leader that they're. You could tell, like, they're still attacking you, but their heart's not in it. Their heart's not in it. Oh, Berserker's dead. Pickles? Uh, the two next to Godfrey. That's more dead barbarians. Hey, wait a minute. The Revenant's not in the tracker. What the heck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's gonna kill the other guys. Uh, no, literally, that that's all he does. He's had, he would have had two turns... And on his turns, that's that's what he does. He raises his sword, he gives a mighty chop, and we've all seen that he's powerful enough to cut through stone, and, and with his unerring accuracy, he just lops the heads off of the people that desecrated his tomb. They are super dead. Sounds like a good thing. Yeah, well. Uh, Finn. Finn. Rapier. Dead. And then move to here. And offhand attack. 27 for 13. Dead. Well, I said this wasn't going to end well for yourselves. 
what about the horse? <laughs> it runs away. <laughs> okay. Uh, snipe it on the way out. Oh, you monster. <laughs> okay. So that's the end of that. Uh, all of the warriors are dead. It's it's literally just the revenant, and with those two gone, he starts walking off back to the tomb. XP. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't need any XP, do you? Yes, I'm so close. Hmm. <laughs> well, maybe we'll wait to the end of the session. No. <laughs> wait. These are. Uh, these these kids have their mom here, right? Yep. It's not and like we just abandoned a bunch of kids all alone. <laughs> uh, pretty much, yeah. You just, you know, their family got dragged out, and they watched this this murderous zombie decapitate their uh, their dad and granddad. So, well, um, they'll be fine. Um, well, nice to see you guys. <laughs> you get the gold. The lesson today is to not oh. be a cultist. We never took care of the fire. Was that was that Emma that said that? Yeah. Um so so you guys start lo- rooting around looking for um the treasured gold. Right, the treasured gold. The promised gold. And um you see that the house is literally in flames like like the barbarians set it set it ablaze along with all the fields but and uh most of the cattle have been slaughtered. So you know that, that there's nothing of value in the house. And if there was anything, it's not going to be able to be recovered. Um, but looking through the barbarians' pouches, you find some of the, the recovered, uh, some of the loot that they had plundered. And that loot would be... Uh, 3K. <laughs> no, there's stuff. There's stuff. There's coins. Not uh, quite a quite a bit actually. Oh no! Another bag of holding. That's right. Burn it! Burn it! Why? All right, I'm gonna go use the restroom. See, I feel bad because now these people don't have a home and we have all. The money. Yeah. <laughs> Should've Should've been a gonna... You ready fools? Should we give them some? I was, I was gonna, uh, whatever my share was, I was gonna give back to them. No, uh, it feels bad. No, all the platinum that he gave us. No. Oh, that's plat. Well, okay, maybe not that. <laughs> We're not giving them anything. What are nice platinum pieces? I mean. Okay, maybe half of my share. <laughs> Why? They're just going to grow up to be Wait, cultists. No, they're not. I mean, yes, they are. <laughs> no, I mean, they're, they're kids. I mean, Emma's good, but she's not that good. I mean, first of all, she's probably going to die in like ten years, and the kids are the kids. Do you Moving know what happens when people kill your parents in front of you? They think about you all of their life, thinking about how they can kill you. We didn't kill their parents. I don't know. We're uh, adjacent to their mom. issue. We, we saved them. We saved them from the barbarians. So they yeah, should. That's, that, that's true. That is true. I mean, my parents never died. So, well, at least what I know of. We should give it. I, I say leave them the copper. Yeah, I can live. A copper. I mean, that's a, that's seven gold for the copper. Fine. Leave them with the copper. Oh, don't worry, Falkfar. I'm going to make an example out of this. An example? Yeah. Sure, you don't join cults and this could happen to you. So I'm going to look at all the children and the mother very carefully. Now, this was all brought upon by these two fools. And to make sure you get the picture, I'm going to take my hand axe. I'm going to chop off, uh, let's say, their left foot on each. And I'm going to shove it into their dead mouths. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 
Jace has lost his mind. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to try to stop. Can I try to stop Crescent doing it? Unfortunately, you're just taken aback and, and by surprise with everything that happened, so you're not able to react quickly enough. I mean, with all that happening, Bulkvar goes into like his little crazy manager, take the fingers and put them at the nose. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad idea. You guys are monsters. How? Oh, well, that was an unnecessary uh, big man. Great, now we kill the, or these par- these kids' parents are dead, and now they're traumatized. Yeah, do you want to make su- make a supervillain? Because that's like the recipe for making a supervillain. No, we've they already done that. They shouldn't be very unhappy with that. They should be happy to listen to the words that we have to say. <laughs> guys are monsters. Well, they are. I like, brush off my hands and walk away. Gotta have him, then walk off. Uh, okay, we we all know that um, Pikmin had a really terrible childhood, so he ruins others, right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, but what about the bag? I suggest that some of you guys uh, put their hand inside the bag. <clears throat> I open the bag and then place it away from me and then flip a piece of silver into it. Okay. The silver disappears into the bag of holding. <laughs> okay. I'll I go pick it up. Uh, you, uh, what, why did you just throw a piece of the bag? Hey, thanks for the biddies, buddy. Appreciate you. Okay, so are you guys heading back to town now? Is that the plan? Yeah, I'm cool with that. Sure. I'm, I'm a... a... I'm gonna check me. Technically, we never found the fire witch. It was, it was a ruse. <laughs> Face palm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm, indeed. Okay, so again, it's a day's travel back to town, take a long rest, and then you arrive back in Red Larch, and then what is the plan after, well... Are we given a broad coordinate to head to the, uh... The, was oh it, gosh, now I can't think of what it's called. I was going to say, was there an end to that statement? <laughs> <laughs> it, it came to a blink mind. Uh. Yes, your mind is blink. Mm-hmm. I, I can't. Um, I'm going to ask Kaylesa if she she knows anything about that uh, scholar, scholar, Scarlet How. Oh. Nice and clever. You'll get there. <laughs> okay. Now sit every every syllable very carefully. Uh, Guys, stop making uh, fun uh, of him because he's non non speaker. <laughs> Hall, Scarlet Hall. Harlot, Harlot Hall is what I heard. Yes. Hall, Hall, Hall. Scarlet Hall. Yes. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> I can talk. Very good, very good. You know what? You, you gave it the college try. Have that. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, talking with Kalesa, she she begins to say, um, "I, you know what? It's so very strange. You mention it. There was a man here earlier." Who, who was talking about the uh, Scarlet Halls. Yeah. Apparently, there's a, a new druid circle that's moved into the hall. A- and they've been making these big spectacles recently. So it, it was the talk of the t- of the tavern while you were away. You're just so nice. Two nights. They travel back and forth. Oh, nice. Nice. Not nice. Oh, no, okay. Um, she continues, she's like, 
um, supposedly you just go up the Deserin Trail and it's it's about three days travel from here. That's 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 that's, that's good to to know. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Kalasa. Now, uh, bring me something to 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 eat and to drink. I'm I'm hungry. Absolutely, right away. Uh, you'll be pleased to know that we hired a new cook yesterday, and uh, so far this one hasn't burnt any food. That's, really uh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. The burnt food is good. <laughs> would Would you like to meet him? Sure. Sure. So so, she uh, she kind of turns and shouts back. Says. Nigel, will you come here, please? (laughs) (laughs) And this very large uh, human male comes out. I mean, he's very portly and corpulent. um, And he just kind of... When he walks up, you see that uh, he has burn marks all over his arms and face. And he, he walks up, he's... Very pleased to meet you. What are those burn marks from? Uh, uh, we were in a, a house fire when I was a kid. You know, it was unfortunate, but we all survived. Didn't lose too much. Taught me how to be very cautious around a flame. I suppose it helps being a, a short cook and all. Don't burn much of the food. Could you by chance make me any some Siracara or maybe some wasp crackers? Uh, wasp crackers? I, I, I don't know. I don't know what that means. I'm missing food from home, but I, okay. Just make, make me whatever your specialty is. Well, the house specialty is crumble bread. It's like a, a loaf of bread, but it's more flaky like a biscuit. And we Just put we put little pieces of uh, turkey and like peas in there, and you Ooh, know, turkey. it's not very tasty, but it's nutritious. Does this story make sense? Like, or, or like, does it? Is he trying to be like? Is he lying? No, you can't detect any hint of deception. Is this this is how they plan to infiltrate the town? The cooks. Why'd you get rid of the other cook, Kalesa? He burned all the food! I thought that's how you made it. Sounds reasonable to me. It was good. Oh, she's, she's trying to be a, an entrepreneurial businesswoman. Yes, really I'm doing exactly much. what you told me to, Master Pikmin. What did you do, Pikmin? Master? I invested in her. She's a great uh, fast of this town. People should really come here. I think she's doing a great job. <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, uh, well, I think I'm some kind of monster. You just chop people's ah, hush now. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want my food. Uh, please, Kalesa. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go back to work then. If there's no more questions, uh, Kalesa, do you need any more inventory? Oh no, we're quite good. Okay, you just let me know. I'm gonna go have a uh, drink and food. Okay, all right. And uh, chef goes and prepares your food. It's actually for being bland, tasteless crumble bread. It's the best bland, tasteless crumble bread you've ever had, because it's bland and tasteless and doesn't taste like uh, you know coals and cinders. And. Uh, as you um, eat, enjoy your food and drink your ale, the day wanes to night, and uh, I don't know. It, it's starting to be quite dark. Might be a good time to turn in for the night. Yeah, I'm gonna take uh, a, a. I mean that 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 was a bit of a push from a DM saying, "Time to go to sleep, pie." 
maybe I'm just trying to end the session. <laughs> I was going to end the session before you went to town, but then, you know, it was like, yeah, maybe they need to do stuff. <laughs> well, folk foul go to sleep on a table. <laughs> go to sleep on a table. Would the uh, blacksmith still be open? Yeah, sure. I'm going to head over to Iron Heads. Um, I, I need my rapiers prepared. Okay. So you walk over to Iron Head. And, uh, he's still just kind of sitting around. Not doing much. Iron Head. Hmm. I need my, I need you to fix my rapiers. Fix. They're broken. But Ironhead has no ore. You should. You paid off your debt. Mm. Long time travel, water deep to Red Lurch. Takes many moons. Okay, then. He he holds up fingers. He's like, it's been. This many needs to be this many. And he holds up three on one hand and five on the other. Okay, well, I'll come back a different time. I'm going to go to... Uh, Gil Gilko's? Something like that. Gilker? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know his name. <laughs> okay. Is his place open? Gelkers is always open. I'm going to enter. Do you have any rapiers? Gelker just eyes you, uh, and, it, and his smile begins to broaden. He's like, of course. Of course Gelker has rapiers. How many do you need, young sir? I need two. Excellent. Excellent. And, uh... Would these just be uh, mundane rapiers? Nothing fancy that you seek? You got any fancy? I might. What do you have? Well, and he, he you know, pulls out from his own scabbard and, and he shows it to you and it's very fine. You can see that there's a silver inlay in the handle. And it almost seems to give off a pearlescent light. Okay. How much? 900 gold pieces. Hmm. Hmm. One platinum piece equals 10 gold pieces, correct? Or is it... Yep. Okay. And like for actual mechanics sake, what kind of rapier is it? Or is it just like a plus? That's not information you have available right now. Okay. Um, could I if I give you my rapiers would that reduce the price in my older rapiers? Sure. Then you only, only owe me 875 gold pieces. So I'll give him my rapiers, and then I'll um, eat 75. Okay, so you, you pay him? I can move. Okay. Okay, so I pay him. Alright, so you give him two rapiers, and he takes one from you. And he gives you one, right? Uh -huh. Okay, cool. Just so that we're on the same page. And then, so wait, did he took both of them? Yep. And then, um, I need just one regular rapier. Why didn't you just keep one? Because those ones are slightly have been used. I want something new. Fifty gold. Okay.
give him the money, and then I leave. Okay. I'm going to go back to the um, tavern. Yep. Um, I'm going to... Is Pikmin still in there? Yep. I'm going to give him the uh, inlaid rapier and ask him if he could identify this. I cannot. I can't. No. Roth used to do that for us. I can maybe look into it in the future. I did not mean to hit that. <laughs> He's attacking <laughs> you. <laughs> He's like, what do you mean? Uh, any can folk park can, or is it just? Mm. He's not the We've right. We already his agreement. You could just attune to it. Sounds Be good. good. <laughs> I'll take the chance. <laughs> I'm going to go to well, meditate and um, attune to my item. Okay. This magic rapier gives off a pearlescent light. When it's unsheathed, it gives off a dim light in a 10-foot radius. And, uh, I'm sorry, it gives off bright light for a 10-foot radius and dim light for an additional 10 feet beyond that. Every time I unsheath it? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> totally tasty. Totally. Totally. <laughs> I got ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, it's just a normal rapier. Yes. Uh... <laughs> at, at least it's a ma magical rapier. So there's that. It, it is magical. <laughs> uh, this is. <laughs> Can I go back and give it? No, I already do it, dude. Dang it, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> you could go back and complain. Uh, Galker, okay. what's the meaning of this? I'm sure that'll go over very well for you. And then we'll have to kill him again. <laughs> okay. That's it for me now. I'll... <laughs> no refunds. <laughs> okay, so everybody's uh, turning in for the night. Then we can we can wrap up. Go do a rest. Yep. Yep. Ha ha! It was a trap. Uh, as everybody uh, begins to sleep for the night, I, can everybody just roll a perception check? No. How would that work? Just, just. Well, I guess I could have looked at all your passive perceptions, but that's a lot of work, and I'm lazy. I'd rather have used my passive. <laughs> alright, alright. Well, it doesn't matter. Finn, in the middle of the night, probably well beyond 3 a.m., you smell something burning. Oh, is that the, the kitchen again? No. It's much stronger. Remember, your rooms are upstairs. And, and as you kind of blink and wake up from your, your, your haze of sleep, um, you realize that there is smoke filling the room. Oh boy, I shout to everybody to wake up. Wake up, you fools! The kitchen has... To... Uh, yeah. Wake up! That's it. Wow, what the hell? Wow, I can assume what happened. Is there a window nearby? Uh, there is. I would like to open it. You I'm find that, that it has been jammed from the outside. Are you kidding? Uh, can, can I move yeah. you? One at a time? Well, Tarantagash? I'm going to want to unarm strike the window that is jammed. <laughs> okay, uh, make a what? Make an attack. Is the, the door uh, locked too? Uh, not locked. The knob turns freely, but trying to force it open... You find that there is something heavy propped in front of it. 
Okay. So, break the the window, guys. All right, so run the gas. These doors open outward. What a fire hazard! <laughs> 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 Uh, you you punch through the window, and you shatter the glass. Okay. Guess I'll use and my bonus action. Power, power, jump out the window. window. <laughs> so is, it, is it open now, or is it yeah, it's open. It's open. I'll jump out. Okay. Is everybody just gonna jump out? Is there anything nearby, like that I could jump onto? Uh, it it's dark. There's smoke cloud on your vision. You can't see. As I as, <laughs> as folks back into the window, <laughs> whistle, to, whistle for the horse, the mule to turn up, so we can jump on it like a western film. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna so break the horse. Pikmin's just gonna fly out the window. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go scan because I can see in the dark really well. Okay, okay. okay. So so, um, you walk outside. All of you guys who jumped are taking seven bludgeoning damage as you land on the ground. Uh, I'm going to use my slow fall ability. Sure. Um, and and Pick, Pikmin is literally flying around looking, and you see the cook it is running. He's running hastily down uh, northward on the long road. I'm going to chase him down, and I'm going to blast him after him. But you're going to chase him down and blast him? Yeah, he looks speed. totally suspicious to me. Oh. What's his, okay. What's his speed? I fly at 60, and I shoot at 120. All right, oh, yeah, so make a, make, make a check. Or can, I, can, I, is, can I gain on him, or are we like... No, yeah, him? no, you can... Div- remember, he's very... Can you... Where are you? Can you, like, move yourself out from under the fire? I can't click my token for some reason. I can click your token. All right, so you you fly out and you start chasing him down the uh, down the the way. And you what? You're just gonna like tackle him, or I'm uh, I'm gonna get in range and if you keep running, I'm going to hurt you in the worst possible way. He can't hear you. You're like up in the air, flying. Well, I'll get a little closer. I'll get like within twenty feet of him. He st- he doesn't care. He's still running. He's running. He's scared. Grab it. It's like his life depends on it. Well, it does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> okay. Uh, you hit him twice, and the the blast is going to kill him, and he falls to the ground dead. Can do we hear him die? Yeah. You ruined our only lead. Well, I'm going to wait for them to catch up. Still flying in the air. Yep. Could I... Assuming that we've all caught up. Yeah. Could I search them? Yep. And... Uh, as you search through the man's belongings, he's got... Like he's still wearing his uh, clothes from the uh, from the kitchen. You don't find anything on his person, except a black tattoo. Uh, very similar in the design to some of the ones you had seen before, but it looks like this. It's the same symbol that was branded on the cows. While they're doing that, I'm going to see if I can help and try and put out this fire. Okay, help how? Is there, like, a water source nearby? Uh, no. Distinctly, there is not. (laughs) Unfortunate. Is anyone, like, scrambling, like, to do something about this? The closest is up here, and Ruler says that that is, uh, 600 feet away. Oh, jeez. I can do stuff. What can you Could do? Could you please? Uh, I, did, I didn't jump out. I'm trying to break down the door inside. <laughs> I'll try to see if I can put out the fire. What? I gotta use this ram somehow. I bought it. I want to use it. So Finn... <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So you guys are still inside. 
uh, choosing to stay in the burning building. I have, yeah, <laughs> I have a crate food and water. So no, technically, no, no, no. I can create thirty gallons of water. I'm not sure how that works. Yeah, so so every round you'll be like, I got water, and then what? You use an action to splash a gallon of it. You're like, yeah. It's a thirty gallons of water. Yeah, but you can't lift and use thirty gallons in a turn, can you? Exactly. Um. So so. The more important question here is. Uh, how long can you guys stay in there before you run out of air? There it is. Okay. Uh, four minutes for me. One plus its con mod. Okay. And, and five minutes. Five minutes for me. Okay. <sighs> So three minutes and four minutes. All right. Uh, five. Five minutes? You have a com mod of four. Oh, yeah, that's right. You read the book. Yes. Not yet. <laughs> All right. So so I would say that gives you plenty enough time to... to all right. He busts the door open. Okay? And then, Finn, you start, what, just dashing through, trying to see if there's anybody still inside? Yes, yes. Okay, it, it looks like most of the patrons have made it out, and they're just kind of standing around gawking at the flame. Uh, but Kalesa is unconscious in the in the main room. Okay, uh, I'll try to shout for uh, for Godfrey and and try to. No, don't just say you do it. Do it. Her. Do it. Do it. Godfrey, I need your help here. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah, I got you. That's literally Godfrey's response. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so so Godfrey, you move down into the main area, right? And then? And then we try to get out of the building with Kailessa. Okay. Um, two things, right? I'm trying to, you move... I would assume being on the main floor in the in the main area, you would go for the front door, right? Yes. And you find that it has also been jammed shut. And then uh, Finn, what's your passive perception? Uh, eighteen. Okay, burned into the floorboards. You can see once again that symbol, right? Um, and it looks to be the source of the fire. And, and. You also see that Kalesa hasn't simply passed out from the heat and the smoke. She has a massive wound on the back of her head. Dark and okay. So she's inverting. Uh, whatever's blocking the door is it out here? Can I see it from the outside? No. No, technically you can't even you don't even know that there's a problem, right? Because okay. nobody has shouted and alerted anybody to the fact that <laughs> Alright, they're not taking a hit. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna you're gonna try and use the, the, the battering ram, right? Yeah. So make a strength check to uh, to try and burst down the door. Is a uh, pin helping me or no, he's K he's got Kalesa. Yep. You have an advantage because you you're using the the ram. Uh, no. No, no, it, it, it doesn't. Backboard. Yeah, it doesn't function like the crowbar. No. Oh, okay. So no, twelve. Point. Twelve is good enough. He takes yeah. the ram and pow, and, and the door is already weakened because it's you know it's on fire, um, and the door just kind of bursts outward. Uh, you see Folkvar standing there, and you drag Kalesa to safety. Okay, uh, Folkvar, uh, take care of Kalesa. She's God hurt. Uh, Godfrey, uh, I'll give, yeah, I'll give Kalesa a quick healing word. If that does anything. Uh, sure, she wakes up. Uh, Godfrey, uh, I saw something inside the, the building. Uh, come with me. Uh, what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. 
And then uh, we move back to, into inside the building in, where that symbol is, is there? Yep. Uh, then I look at uh, Godfrey and say, uh, can you do something about that? Uh, uh, I didn't. I I didn't have the spell magic prepared. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, we can try hitting it. <laughs> uh, sh sure, why not? I'll try to give it a whack. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I got nothing. Okay, you strike the symbol on the floor, and it does nothing. It's already been activated. It's purpose fulfilled. The, the building is is being raised to the ground. Dang it. <laughs> I'll just I'll do create water. All at once you hear an explosion coming from the kitchen. Followed by wow. numerous other explosions. It sounds like uh, glass containers bursting. Hey Pikmin, there's your ale. <laughs> I mean it's flammable, oh but <laughs> <laughs> we have to 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 leave uh, uh, Godfrey now, and right. we run out the building. Why would you guys slow, run slow. out and run back in? Uh, I think he he was hoping that if they got rid of the room, the fire would go away. Yes, <laughs> but I forgot to prepare it. So, womp womp. Okay, and on that note, now we can wrap up the stream. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll put the light sword so we can hold it up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> it's dark out here. Oh, I got this, guys. Sword. <laughs> what else does it do? See, it would actually be useful if I was, like, you know, a fighter that didn't have dark vision. But I guess they don't know that you have dark vision. <laughs>